Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne and in today's video, we're going to paint a cat face. Now, I was asked to do a, uh, to be a part of a fundraiser here in my region for an organization called Pet Works, which is a no-kill animal shelter right here in my town. So, of course, you know, I've done it before with them. I've worked with them before and they do good, they do good things here and place so many animals in homes. And yeah, I, I love being a part of that type of thing. So uh, what you're gonna see today is the demo that I'll be working on at the event. Now I can't possibly paint an entire painting in the short period of time that I have to work at these events. And you'll see, these events are when they're just people coming around, you're talking, you're, you're schmoozing, you're doing the usual art thing, um, passing out a lot of cards. <laughs> and uh, so I usually take my demos till near completion here in the studio. So I'm gonna show you the piece that I, I did complete. This is the completed piece of the cat. And this is an um, this is an eight by eight, and it's on a masonite panel. So it's a super slick pa panel. And I'll show you step-by-step step the process that I did to, to do this little piece. Um, yeah, I just, you know, the last time I did it, I actually did my friend's dog, Bosco, and, uh, I actually gave her the portrait at the end of the, uh, the event. It was a really fun time. And, uh, so yes, when I go to these events, uh, it's, it's fun because I love painting and talking to people and they get to actually watch me paint and it's, and that makes it interesting. You know, people like to watch people paint. That's a cool thing, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take you step by step and I'm going to, you know, watch to the end. You're going to get to see the actual, um, you'll get to see a little bit of the auction. You'll get to see what goes on at these events and, uh, you'll get to hear some of the people talking to me. And I can't tell you how many people I heard say to me, this looks just like my cat. You're painting my cat. You're painting my cat. So, um, and what's really nice is a friend of mine, a good friend Paula, actually purchased the piece and uh, because it, it looked just like her cat. So thank you so much for being here. And if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. Know that I will have memberships coming up real, real soon. So be watching for the little join button that's gonna show up. And let's go ahead and jump in to this little painting of the cat. So for our little tabby cat painting, I've got an array of colors down. I've got, I'm gonna start up here. I've got burnt umber. I have raw sienna, Italian uh, yellow ochre, or no, I'm sorry, French yellow ochre, Italian uh, brown umber. I have um, yellow lake deep, or is that, that may be actually Indian yellow deep. Titanium white. Now, of course, I've got my King's Blue over here. These colors right here, um, I've got um, Thallo Green Lake. I have Caribbean Turquoise. These are uh, Michael Harding colors. And this was one I didn't even know I had in my box of tricks. This is Cobalt Chromite Green. I'm just gonna play with it. I The cat I'm doing has green eyes and I'll just play with it. Um, of course, I have um, Ivory Black here. So here's some of the colors of the greens that I was like, I'll forget the name of this color because I've never used it before, know nothing about it. This is gonna be a fun little experiment. So these, um, this is our starting palette for this little tabby cat and let's see where it goes. Okay, I wanna show you what brushes we're gonna start off with. So here I have a very rough sketch of my little tabby. Um, of course, I will be using my uh, wipeout tool because you know, whiskers. And I have, um, Actually, just a, a number three Shiraz Filbert. Not huge, not a huge brush. Um, got a long Filbert. This is an Eclipse. This is a number five. I have a smaller Ultimate Long Flat uh, by Rosemary. Here, you know, you've seen this brush before. Uh, this is a number 12, um, Series 279. This is what I use to blend a lot, so I want to soften the background. And again, another nice blending tool. This is a Series 278, uh, number two, Rosemary Long Filbert. So, um, I'm gonna go with a very dark background. I want this to very be moody and brown, very similar to what my reference is. So, this is what we're gonna start with. I am probably going to mix, let me get a palette knife. I wanna mix a very warm, dark, warm background. So I'm gonna take a little, 
the um, burnt umber. Uh, get a little bit of, I just wanna, I'm gonna start with this color right here. Just kinda, I don't know, it's, it's a warm yellowy brown. And I'm gonna kinda block some stuff in here. I'm gonna dip my brush in just a little bit of oil. The substrate is a gessoed panel. It is slick, but it does have some texture to it, so it's not as slick as some of the ones that you know that I've been known to use. But it's, and I'm just kind of cutting in around the cat. And I may actually mix it up a little bit and add a little bit of the, a little bit of the yellow ochre in around the cat, almost give it a little bit of a glow. Who knows, I may actually just play on the glow because I know where the dark values are gonna be. Okay, I had to pull out for a second here. So I'm gonna try to get some of this area in and this area in because I have the whiskers and I wanna get those in. So the whitest white is gonna be on this part of the, of the muzzle because remember the light's coming from this direction in the actual reference. So I'm gonna have to go with a kind of a gray on this side. So I'm gonna take a little bit of um, King's Blue. make it green but it's not a bad color so I'm using the um, this happens to be the number two long filbert series 278 mm. I'm adding a little bit more of the yellow ochre in here First, it's gonna look very, very um, strange, I guess. Just putting the light values, and I've, I oftentimes will work with my eyes squinty this stage of the game. I'm gonna put a lot more yellow in that. A bit of this, just a tiny bit of the ivory black, and yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, I put a little bit of um, Michael Harding's uh, magenta. And I put a little bit of Scarlet Lake down as well, also. 
Michael Hardick. So for Scarlet Lake is hotter color, magenta being cooler. And sometimes I'm gonna use a little bit of in-betweenish of those two colors. And it may seem a little over the top. I'm gonna go ahead and put this little bit of pink right here on this part of the lip. And I need a smaller brush. Now, this is not a big piece. This is only an eight by eight. I'm using a zero red dot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, actually the color that's down already, I'm just gonna move it around. Um, grab a little bit of this white-ish gray here. Actually, it gets a little bit browner, so it's... And I am going to just softly fuzz that edge. Always make sure your brush is clean because if you're working with colors and you don't want it to blend, so to speak, I'm going to cut in a little bit on this nose, just like that. It's, it's not very noticeable, but and I can always stack this paint up a little bit more. I, I have it a little thick, but I thought I was being really clever, but it's mislaid plans. Okay. I'm gonna, I realize I don't have orange either, but I do have red. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the, um, is it Yellow Lake Deep? Yeah, Yellow Lake Deep. This looks like it did, oh, you can't see it, but this, the, the color I laid down is Yellow Lake Deep. I'm taking Yellow Lake Deep, Scarlet, um, Lake, Scarlet Lake Red, and I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, brown here and make an interesting orange for this nose leather. And they may be getting smaller or whatever, too. I'm switching over to brown now. Because at some point, I may actually put, there is some browns and stuff in here, but it'll be fine, I think, for the whiskers. I'm going to... You know me, I get all excited about stuff like whiskers. But I'm wanting to put a little bit of darker colors in here. So in this area,
I'm gonna cut those suckers in. You know how I like to use my tool. Now it's easier for me to cut this way. Um, some of them kind of go like this. Here's some little shorty ones. There's one that goes this way. Now, they're not as white as I'd like them to be, but you know what, I'm good with this. Like I said, this is actually for a charity event. Not that this is actually gonna be the one that's given. I'll be doing um, the actual portraits. Oh, I gotta do some little bit more on this side. Gotta, I gotta bring this, the background hair out a little bit more here. Um, I will be doing, giving um, portraits of way to the highest bidder on a, um, I think I'm the live auction person. They're, they're actually live auctioning off my piece. And it will be for somebody to have a portrait of their pet. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just gonna start to lighten this. Okay, let's go ahead and put some whiskers in on this side. There, it's funny because some of these whiskers are going, there's a lot of down, downward whiskers here. Whoops, we skipped. It's very hard to go back and see, I got a little mess up there, I'll have to fix that. But you know, with cats, it's their whiskers are so important to their you know, to a cat, that's like, that's like everything. Okay, so where I had that little mess up, right there, we're gonna go back in and put some more color back in there. Just like that, clean that up. And I'm good with that, I'm good with the whiskers. All right, I'm just gonna start filling in some areas here. I'm gonna go in with some of the very dark areas and I'm gonna grab, I'm glad I put that uh, Scarlet Lake down. I'm gonna put some of this, I'm just gonna go in pretty dark. Um, and it will look kind of weird because it won't, um, it's not gonna be detail -y. You like that word, detail -y? <laughs> So I mixed, um, Um, that Scarlet Lake with um, some of the burnt umber and I'm just kind of going in in the areas I, it, it'll seem like but I'm not blending it and it, you're right <laughs> I'm not blending it but I am trying to stay true to the direction that the paint is going if that makes sense grab a little bit of oil not a lot I'm gonna suggest the whole inside of this ear will be kind of pink um, oh I get to use my brush again okay I get to use my uh, my little tool my wipeout tool so I'm gonna put a dark color on the inside of the ear. And I don't want it to be black, black. 
a lot of folks out walking around today. And you're gonna laugh, but I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in here. And the reason is, because I'm gonna scratch it out, there'll be some of that blue will show. I'm gonna try it, see if it works anyway. So I'm cleaning off my brush putting in some blue. doing things now you're like you're probably wondering why did you put the blue paint I'm gonna try something over to see if it's gonna work there's all kinds of neat little hairs in here and I'm just going to I thought maybe it would would catch but it's eh. Eh, it's not really doing what I wanted it to do it looks good and I'll, I'll let it dry It did, it did work, but not as well as I thought it was going to work. So it still means I'll have to move some black in here, but I'm going to let it dry. Because remember, I have to work on this actually at the event. So I can do that kind of detail. Okay, I'm going to take this little soft brush here. I'm gonna start putting in this color here. I gotta really clean off the yellow lake into Italian brown umber and oh, that's a good color. There we go. So you can see that I'm going with the way that the hair grows. And the reason I'm doing that is because ultimately it will matter in the end. It may not look like it does when you're first popping it down, but it will. Now I know have some of that light light coming in there so I'm just gonna go ahead and push this back up and um, suggest some of the lighter values in here I'm just putting the, the paint on the very tip of the brush and pulling up and it's not really doing what I want it to do there we go I'll do that with a smaller brush. There's a lot of dark in here, and I, I really want to get into one of the eyes. She has, this cat has beautiful green eyes. I believe it's a female. Don't know for certain, but I'm, I'm thinking she feels like a female. I want to go ahead and put some of these other colors in here. This, I think this cat is actually a um, one of those little bangles, which, uh, you know, they have, they've gotten to where they started breeding some, I don't know, I, I sometimes think some of that's very questionable, but they're breeding um, like ocelots and other spotted wild cats with domestic cats to get these interesting patterns. I don't know how I feel about that. I think, anytime I start messing with stuff, I mean, 
I'm sure they, I'm sure there's somebody out there who's going to tell me otherwise, but. Okay, this side of the cat seems very, it's very warm. Remember our, our light source is coming from here. going around the outside here green it greens it up a little bit more I'm gonna have to get a smaller brush believe it or not I guess a pretty small one but I'm using a number two pure sable pretty small guy a little bit of the lemon yellow and titanium white. I'm kind of going on the outside part of the eye. 
because that seems to be where the light is really bright. Goes all the way around like that. Remember, the eyeball is just that, it's, it's a ball. So sometimes you're gonna have some other color in there. Sometimes there's some golds, even in a green eye. I'm putting a little bit of... I'm going on with a little bit of a different greeny gold inside, which I achieved by using the Italian brown umber. And... Uh, green that I got that's the Windsor Newton color one that I hadn't used before it's the cobalt chromite green it's, it's this guy so I'm mixing that with a little bit of the Italian umber you know and I could have gone in here with some of my standards like the sap green and played with it but you know sometimes I like to just experiment and try different colors and See if I get a different effect. And you can see that there's so much interesting color in this guy's eye. And so I'm going back in with white and lemon yellow. And move it to there we go. Lighten up on this part of the eye. creates a little bit more of the depth. Obviously, I've not put the pupil in yet, but... And there's fun little things that you could just put little squigglies in. It's kind of hard. I'll, I'll catch that next time. Remember, I've got to finish this at the live event. So, I gotta, I gotta leave something fun. interesting gray over here in the corner. It's really, really gray. It's part of the sclera of the cat's eye. And I'm mixing King's Blue, a little bit of raw umber. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest that there's this, this area over here. But I'm getting ready to put the black in. And this cat almost looks like it has a purple eyeliner. So I'm gonna make a purple by using the magenta ultramarine blue, and I'm going to mix some of the brown in, raw umber, or I, I'm sorry, burnt umber. So it seems kind of weird that I'm putting this purpley color, but I'm going to put some black in there too. That's because what I, it's what I see. Now on this side of the eye, it looks very brown up here, and I'm going to bring this up a little bit.
kind of getting a feeling that the eye is somewhat recessed, as it is. dab in my brush. I'm gonna wash my brush off. So I'm using this little sable. Eh, I'm gonna take away that whole layer and try to put it back in. Again, some of this may not happen until the night of the event. some shine and stuff going on in here, but I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre, just a little bit, and just kind of play little, I don't know what you call them, <laughs> little squiggly things. You know, if you really look at an iris, there's some really interesting stuff going on in there. And there might be little squiggly chips and weird little things. Trying to darken this up in here where it's almost like a vague, like you can't really tell what it is. That's pretty good, I'm liking that. All right, I still have to get the roundness here. So this part of the eye kind of comes. me the other day if I'd help her shave her cat. <laughs> Things friends will do for each other, right? So, uh, I don't want to get scratched up. I love you, but come on. See, I'm softening this up again. I'm putting more purple in next to the black. It just softens the edge, and it's actually what I see in my reference. Just a soft purpley color. Um, and I'm again, I'm, I've got this line here, but I'm trying to... There we go, that's what I wanted. Um, to be that light. There we go. That's better. Now I'll be putting in a lot more lighter colors around the eye. Remember, I gotta save some of it for the event. I'm gonna go ahead and give this cat a pupil. Now my reference to cat's pupil is really tiny slit. And of course, house cats and some of your smaller cat species do have vertical slitted pupils, but truly all your large cats, lions, leopards, they have round pupils. Now the fox also has a slitted pupil like this. 
Um, I don't know if I'm gonna want it that slit in. I may make it a little bit more open. Just a little bit. my brush really really well I saw this man walking earlier today. Oh, that's good. The policeman just picked up this. There was an older man when I was walking singer today. Faith restored in humanity. And he was walking and he looked like he needed to pay a check or pay a bill and he had a bill in his hand. He's a very old guy. And the policeman just must have picked him up, took him to where he needed to go. Amen. That's some good, that's some good, good police. Got a sweet, the police officer has a sweet smiley face. And this makes me happy. Okay, so he must have had his truck was down part below. I want to tell people when I see people doing good things, it makes me really, really happy. Police in my area of Kingsport, Tennessee, are really, really nice. I mean, they, some of them, some of them, not all, but most, for the most part, go way above the call of duty in helping people. And I just saw it. Now, I know that looks like it just kind of stopped right there. I'm just going to take it, taper it in a little bit. And I'm going to... I'm going to put a little bit more shine right here. Okay, this is, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this again. The old, I am, I can't finish it, and I'm gonna finish it at the event, but what, I just wanna get it to where I have most of it done. So I am looking over everything, and I'm just making sure, you know, it's good to keep coming back to it. 
and see if there's any I'm bringing this out a little bit. I'm giving her a little bit more roundness and I'm gonna gray that side down just a tad. I'm using a little bit of uh, King's Blue in my um, yellow ochre white mixture I had made. It's just gonna be a kind of a greenish gray. Why I want that is I wanna take this out a little bit more. Sometimes, sometimes if you go away for a day and you look at it later, and you can sometimes see problems. So I may actually move this eye over a little bit. See, sometimes there's even little, like actual moving, <laughs> moving of body parts. It happens. And I'm just using a really light hand because I'm trying to soften that up. It's not wet anymore over here. This is not wet. So I can't expect it to do what I normally like for it to do. So I'm just kind of giving it a very soft lift, if you will. And actually everything else seems to be pretty much in place. I just wanted to bring that out a little bit. And this part of the side of the muzzle area is gonna be a little bit taller. Whoops, there got to be some pink in there. Did not want that. Hang on, we're gonna take that right off. So I, for goodness sakes, sometimes you get, it just, it happens. Okay, there we go. And there's a little bit that comes up here. And I'm pretty sure none of this is really going to be seen in the So there's a little bit of this white comes up here. So knowing that it should come up in the middle of the eye. So I'm gonna move this eye over a little tiny bit or I'll actually make it a little bit bigger. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm looking here. So this part is gonna be a little bit bigger. Sometimes I don't see it until the next day. That's why it's good for me to take a little break. As you know, if you're familiar with my work, I don't always draw everything on and it's, I kind of like the spontaneity of a piece. Um, there's probably a lot of artists that would disagree with me on that approach, but eh, you know, everybody does what works for them. And for me, a painting has to be fun, even if it's just a little piece like this. Um, I don't make it too controlled. So I'm looking at my distance here and I'm moving this over. up so it's good that I didn't do that other eye and chances are since this is actually for a demo purse purposes I might have left it and not worried about it so we're pulling that in a little bit um, now I want to have to look at the nose area I like her nose by the way, the brush that I'm using right now is a number one Rosemary Shiraz pointed round. It's my one that has a little bit of a bent fuel for some reason. This little area is kind of bent. I don't know. It's just probably happened in the process. It's not a big deal. I happen to like it. I know how to work with it. So it's, I'm good with it. So if I want to say that this is where this comes down, this is just going to be over a little bit more. And this part of her nose is going to be over a little bit more, which means I'm going to bring bringing out some of the orange again. I need my, using my Scarlet Lake is how I'm making the orange. I'm using the Scarlet Lake and uh, um, Yellow Lake Deep to make my orange for the nose leather. this a little bit over it's a little darker on that side it's funny how that just changes everything but it's going to be okay Orangey part that 
kind of comes out just a little bit right here. Now it's kind of, everything's making sense now on this cat's face. So this part kind of goes right here. There's this little bit of the black, ivory black. Twisting my brush, you can't see, but oftentimes when I'm rolling it into paint, especially if it's starting to get old and frayed on the ends, if you can see if it's a little frayed, I roll it like you do a fork when you're rolling up spaghetti. <laughs> and uh, it helps keep everything sharp. Okay, that makes more sense. Now she's gonna have a little bit more around her eye. So now I'm gonna put in where the eye's gonna go. So right, shoot, this is not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna suggest that her eye Actually use a different brush. This is giving me a little bit of fit. I'm switching over to the uh, number two Pure Sable. This is a 93 series by Rosemary. It's a nice little brush. It's nice and thick, but yet it's got that nice little point. So I gotta get this shape correct. So this is gonna come out a little bit more. And it's, I'm gonna grab some of my purple. You remember I, I do see a little bit of purple in the area of um, around the eyes, around the eye leather, if you will. So I see it in amongst this area. And it's just really very soft. It's okay, I'll blend it in a little bit more. So all that's gonna become this green color. Let's see if I can do this. All right, making sure that she's it's high enough on this side. I want to use a brown here. So that's kind of like her eyelashes. Now, because the light is coming from this side, this eye is gonna appear a lot lighter green. It's gonna, it's, it's just, it's illuminated. So, I'm gonna get a different brush. I'm gonna use, this is one of my little complimentary brushes that Rosemary gave me, and I'm assuming it's a pointed round uh, Shiraz. It's a good a nifty little brush. So if you remember the colors that I had, and you can kind of see them over here on the side, um, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a little bit of the um, Caribbean turquoise actually, and a whole lot of white paint. And it's gonna be a lot, a lot lighter and a lot more turquoisey and a lot lighter color. Uh, it still does have to have some yellow in it though. I have, let's see, there's still a little bit of that left. Oh yeah, there we go. That's it, got it. I used a little dab of um, the lemon yellow, the Michael Harding's lemon yellow, and I'm gonna go right up to this upper point. And it's gonna be hard because it's still wet up there and I don't wanna I, I do have to leave some of this <laughs> for the event, but I'm having to be honest folks, I'm really actually having a lot of fun with this painting. So, and the sad thing is I have so many commissions I'm supposed to be doing. I just couldn't make this, it happen for the show, for this particular event. So, darn it, 
I just, I, I started this piece and this is just because I wanted to do this piece for this event. Um, and I'm hoping that it generates uh, interest in the uh, piece that I'm donating. Okay. But I wish this was something that, you know, you know hopefully somebody will want to buy this. I, I doubt it. It's not their cat. Maybe. Maybe somebody just says, oh my gosh, that looks just like my cat. I have to have that painting. Oh, that'd be awesome. Okay, so I'm wiping this brush off. Going back to the little sable. I gotta work the shapes. See, so remember that interesting little purple color? I'm gonna put a little bit more ultramarine blue into it. And just kind of So some of the black isn't gonna ha is gonna happen on the outside here. So I'm gonna grab some black. And I'm always just using it right on the tip. So if I think that the black is right here, that's where I'll put it. There is a, I'm gonna take a little bit of the darker green. You remember that really interesting green that, um, I'm gonna put this in here, just in this little corner. There we go. So I'm always looking for other areas where that might be. It's almost like I'm making a grayish green just on the very edges here. And this eyeball in my photo reference is a lot, um, I don't know how else to say, it's, it's, it's kind of out of focus. And I'm just making those little squiggles. And it's actually very, 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 Always looks weird until you get the pupils in. And I wish I could say that there was a bunch of um, other colors that I see, but really I don't. I'm going to put a little bit in because I know that the pupil is going to go in this basic this ba basic area here, and so I'm just kind of making a little bit of interest. There's almost always some little squiggly, weird lines and stuff. So I got a match, and I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce that black in here. So I have to match the gaze or the, the pupil size and everything.
Here we are at the fur ball and everybody's just kind of getting set up. There is, um, this is the cocktail hour. So I set myself up over here. So I have my little Edge Pro gear set up. I've got the cat portrait. Um, I've got just a minimal amount of paints because as you know, we did most of the portrait in the studio, but we'll finish it up here tonight. Uh, everybody's dressed in their Western attire and it's really kind of fun and, and festive. So they have all their, um, their silent auction area over here. There's, I'll be part of the live auction and uh, hopefully we'll go ahead and make some money for pet works. So let's go ahead and, and finish this painting. just grabbed a cat off the internet and it's it's nobody's cat that auctioned off? Um, it, it's not going to be auctioned off but I will sell it it can be it can be purchased okay just you have my card yep um, but there will be a 16 by 20 that will be auctioned off but now I mean if for cat portrait this is a if you actually if you thought you wanted it if you had a picture of your cat I can actually start skip it, switching some of the so it's more personal. No, I have like one of her.
work pictures, it's got to be just about our pets, right? Thank you. I wish I could be Thank you. Alright, so there's two people that say that this cat looks like their cat. Well, look at you, cowgirl. I don't even know what's on there. Maybe it's a picture of a cat, but that's a cat and there's a cat. No, I just painted this cat. I've been painting this one and just, you know.
Yes. You may take off a different part of the painting and work on the ears a little bit. How's it going? It's going. I'm going to finish it for two A lively little bar? Oh, that's the bar line? Oh, you haven't gotten your drink yet? Oh, no. I won't get it until after we get seated because okay. I'm trying to make sure everything's good. I got it. Sydney said she was running late. So we... Oh, has she gotten her her instructions yet? I emailed them to her, but I have had some uh, addendums. I've been being well fed. The staff here has just been taking care of me. They keep coming over here. I'm like, okay, I need to stop eating too. Because I know I'll smile at somebody and I'll probably have like cilantro on my teeth. Beautiful. I just wanted to say your painting of Killer is still one of our best projects. That makes me very happy. That's good. This is, this is the fun stuff right here, you know, being able to make people happy. That's what you do. And I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do that. You have a gift. A great gift. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm not going to distract you. Well, my Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and your picture really makes a difference to me. We talk about it almost every day. It's right in our bedroom. That's good. Thank you. Okay, um, before I can get into this ear, I'm going to have to flip it over. Because my hand works better in this direction than it does in this direction.
right, you're hearing over the din here. We're about ready to wrap the painting up, I think. I got the hair inside the ears. And so this is, looks bluer here because remember the light on this side of the painting is a lot darker on this side, lighter on this side. I'm pretty happy with it. I might lighten a little bit of this part of the nose up just a tad. So I'm going to take a little bit of... lot of hair in the ears moving down the piece you can see that the, the there's a lighter edge on the right where the lights hitting it and um, I'm actually quite satisfied with it I don't know that I'm actually gonna do any more to it so we might be done portrait for one paint Suzanne Barrett Justice is here somewhere see where is she right here Suzanne Mary Jess is a renowned and international wildlife artist for conservation. She lives in Kingsport, but does her show internationally. Her work is shown throughout the country. 
Suzanne done work with zoos all over the world, and most recently in Mexico and Tampa, Florida. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Very good. I, I, went, to, I went to county schools, but I can still read pretty well, okay? Now! So you got to see the whole show. You got to see this to the very end. And here's a little side side note. Uh, the painting that I did, I had so many people come by and say, that looks just like my cat. That looks just like my cat. I would say if I started actually counting, at least five people came by and said, oh my gosh, you're painting my cat, my cat, my cat. Interesting enough, my good friend, uh, Paula actually purchased this piece because it looked like her cat. So this, this particular demo piece will have has found a home and will be uh it'll stick around here in Kingsport it'll stay here but yeah it was really it was really uh neat that she was able to purchase this piece and of course um you know the painting that I um the portrait that was sold in the auction um the person who actually bought the portrait that I'll be doing it's going to be a fun portrait for me to paint because it's of a uh, German short hair pointer. So that'll be fun. I love painting gun dogs. That's, that's fun for me. So yeah, win-win, right? And we did make some money for the Petworks uh, no-kill animal shelter here in my region. So it was good all around. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. And if you are also my subscriber, keep in mind that very soon I will be opening up a join. You'll start to see a join button. And the join button is to become a member on my YouTube channel. So know that that's coming really soon. Um, and you'll be the first to know when I actually go ahead and, and pull that trigger. You'll get to be a member and that would be really fun if you choose to be a member. I look forward to it. This is going to be neat. Yeah. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.